Hello, welcome to another scratchy voice video. I apologize, these videos I have a bit of a head cold making them, but I'm, I'm gonna push forward anyway. And in this video, I am going to talk to you about something called NLP compromise. Now when you think of, I don't know what you think of when you think of natural language processing and the, and the whatever, but I often think of, um, the programming language Python. And there are a lot of amazing natural language processing toolkits and libraries and frameworks and things that you can work with with Python. But here I am, I'm making some stuff happen in the browser, in JavaScript, I'm using something called P5.js. I thought it would be worth seeing what's possible with JavaScript. And uh, in a previous video, I looked at uh, a JavaScript text library called Rita.js. And in this video, I wanna look at one called NLP Compromise, which has some similar functionality and, um, and other different functionality as well. So let's first just look at how do I even use NLP compromise. So first of all, here's the GitHub repository. You can go there and as with a lot of GitHub repositories, it has a nice readme which kind of gives you some of the basics. And you can, I, I encourage you to read through this, click on some of the links and see how it works. But you can get this basic idea like there's this, um, syntax of chaining in a way. I have an NLP object and I want to call a function sentence. I'm going to pass it a string. Then I can at, perform an action on it, like turn it to past tense. And then I can ask, um, and I can also then get the text of that past tense version of this sentence. So a lot of what you can do with NLP compromise is pass it a sentence and do things to it, like negate this sentence or turn it to past tense. It knows about verbs and how to conjugate verbs. Um, and, and uh, various things like that. So let me, let's go forward at least in getting started working with in our code. So if I scroll down here, you can see, okay, off you go. Hmm, NPM install NLP compromise. Ooh, what's that? Well, one thing I will point out is that this is something you can also use with something called Node, which is a server-side package for JavaScript, and I'm gonna look at that in some future videos. But right now, I'm in the client side, and I need a client-side JavaScript library. In the same way that I am referencing uh, here in my HTML file, I'm referencing the P5.js libraries, I wanna reference nlp.compromise. And in a previous video, I showed you how to download the Rita.js library directly to your hard drive. Here's another way that I can do it, because it gives me the code right here. I can actually just take this entire script tag, copy it, and I can paste it right here into my index.html file. So this is now referencing a version of the library that has been placed on a CDN, a CDN referring to a content delivery network, fancy word for a web server. And you can see that web server is unpkg.com and the library is promise dot min, it's the minified version dot js. So even just adding that to my index.html file should make something happen. Well, maybe not. I expected to, did I save that? Let me try one more time. So I expected to see maybe a little initialization message happening in the console, but maybe I need to actually do something with NLP compromise first. So what's the first thing that I need to do? One thing with this library that I need is I wanna have a variable that I can always just, everything that I'm gonna do with this library is, essential, uh, is a function that I'm gonna call on a variable that kind of holds the whole library. And the actual library is called uh, and is by default called uh, NLP compromise. So, but I want to just be able to have a reference called NLP, which refers to NLP compromise, window.nlp compromise for short. And I realize this might cause me a problem. I'm going to keep going though. Uh, so let's look at what happened now if I say NLP. Uh, that work? Yeah, look at that. So look, I have this nice, now like in LP, I suddenly have all of this, I have all these uh, functions that I can call, like adjective, adverb, date, lexicon. So like, you know, what happens if I just um, call something like NLP uh, dot sentence? This is a test. And that doesn't say a sentence there. Can I click sentence? You can see, aha, now it made me a sentence and it has all sorts of things in it. It has terms. Uh, you can see it terms has the word is, which has a part of speech, and it, all this like metadata about the stuff that I'm doing. So you can see this is pretty exciting that NLP Compromise has all this stuff. So let's just look at one quick thing that I can do. Like what if what I want to do is negate anything that somebody types into that form? So something that I can do, right? I've got the same setup that I had in the Rita example where whenever I click submit, I get the string that the user entered and then I'm gonna spit some new text out. So in other words, I'm gonna do this and it spits out, it was a dark and stormy night. So what if I, wanted, what if I say NLP 
dot sentence s. So I want the output to be the result of, uh, well, let me do this in a bunch of different steps. Even though I could chain it all in one line of code, I'm gonna say, let me first make a sentence object. Then let me make the output. I'm gonna sentence dot negate. Now you might think this is enough. I want to negate that sentence and that's going to give me the output. But everything in NLP compromise is like this object with all this information stored in it. And all I want is the actual text. So I need to just say negate the sentence and give me the text. And now if I run this and I hit submit, uh, uh, <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> Oops, so I made a mistake, which is that the negate function is actually not a function you can call on an, on an NLP compromise sentence. It's something you have to call on an NLP compromise statement. Subtle distinction there, but, you, uh, um, but so if I want to negate something, I need to use the NLP statement function. And I'll just call this a statement instead. And now I should be able to negate that and see the output. So let's see how that works. Whoops. I'm, I was looking at, by the way, the README has a, a, as a reference for all this stuff and shows you different examples. And that's how I noticed that I made that mistake because here in the example, NLP statement, she sells seashells dot negate dot text. Okay, so here we go. And now if I hit refresh and hit submit, it wasn't a dark and stormy night. <laughs> I am not teaching on a live stream, submit. I am teaching on a live stream. So you can see here, this is a kind of powerful, you know, that just as a little tiny little demo isn't very much. I'm just taking a sentence and inverting the, the um, negating it. <laughs> um, but you can imagine what kind of creative outcomes could come from this. And also, just seeing this, I'm only scratching the surface of what is possible with NLP compromise. I meant to start, I started with the sentence, to just show you a quick example of negating it, and then I realized I needed the statement. But I want to back up and use that sentence function, because the sentence function is kind of a core um, element of NLP compromise that allows you to analyze and do stuff with a sentence. So let's, let's look at some things that I could do there. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to, I'm going to comment. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to say var sentence equals NLP sentence s. And actually, let me just go into the console to test out some of these ideas. So let's say I type var s equals uh, it was a dark and stormy night. And now I'm going to use the NLP sentence function to make a sentence object. And I'm just going to call it sen for short. I'm going to say nlp.sentence s. So now I have this sentence object. And it has tons of stuff in it. One of the things in it that's really key for me to use is this uh, array called terms. So I can look at the sentence terms. So the NLP library has actually tokenized that sentence into word chunks. This is very good because I can say sen terms index 0. And now I have this object that has all this information about the first term, the white space that's around it. What is the text of that term? What is its parts of speech? Reasoning. There's all this metadata there that I can make use of. So for example, I can say terms index 0 dot text. And now I have that particular text, terms index 0.pos. And I have this object that's telling me it's a noun and a pronoun. So there's lots of metadata in there. So what I want to do now is take any sentence and pluralize all the nouns. This is something that I can do. Uh, NLP Compromise knows how to do things like take a verb and make it future tense or past tense. So let's pluralize all the nouns and make the verbs future tense. OK? Let's do that. All right, so now here we go. Um, so what I want to do, I have the sentence in the code, and I want to say for var i equals 0, i is less than terms dot length i plus plus. And uh, just to make sure I can rebuild it, let's start again with an empty output. And let's say output plus equals terms index i dot text. Create p uh, output. OK, so now let's run this again. And ah, terms is not defined. Oh, sentence.terms, sentence.terms. And right, terms is part of the sentence object, so I need to add that in there. And now I can submit. So again, I've lost the white space. Now, I seem to recall that 
Something in those terms object tells me something about white space. I hesitate to go down this road, but let's try to stay true to the white space here. I think that'll be interesting. So let's try this again. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna debug this kind of here in the, um, I'm gonna do this again, and I'm gonna say uh, terms, whoops, s.terms index zero. Nope, oh, sentence.terms index zero. Ah, so let's look at the white space. Uh, sentence.terms index zero dot, dot white space. Was that what it was? Ah, look at this. Preceding trailing. Oh, this is exciting. Look at this. So this, uh, you know, th this may exist in other libraries and frameworks, but I'm just sort of discovering it here. This is telling me what's coming before it and what's coming in after it. So this is very, this is great because I can rebuild the text. So let's actually use the trailing white space is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to then say output plus equals sentence dot terms index i dot white space dot trailing. So this should give me, I want to put the text of the output and the trailing white space in there, in the output. And now, look at this. I rebuilt the sentence exactly from what it was before. So this is great because I chunked it up. I, 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 I analyzed it, now I can play with the terms individually, but I can put it back together and retain its exact original form. Now, what I want to do here is say, let me make a variable part of speech, and let me look terms index i pos. So I want to look at that, I want to just grab the parts of speech and put it, of that term and put it in a variable. Now I want to say, if pos part of speech noun, I'm just going to do something right now. I'm going to say output plus equal noun. Just to like make sure this is working. So I want to check, is it a noun? Output plus equal noun. Hit submit. OK, so you can see it noun was a dark and stormy night noun. So great. So that is working. So this is a way of testing if that's a noun. Now what if it is a noun? What I want to do now is take that noun and pluralize it. How do I pluralize it? Let's go back to the NLP Compromise website and look here. Uh, I believe it's one of the examples referenced here. Uh, there it is. So if I call NLP noun and pass in that text, now I've made this noun object and I can call functions on it like pluralize. Pluralize is something you could do with a noun. So if pos.noun, then I want to say, um, so I'm going to say uh, new word equals um, so I, I'm going to put this here, sorry. So if it's a noun, I want to just say uh, var noun equals that text. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I think what would be useful here is to actually just pull that word out. So I want to get the word out and put it in its own variable, because I'm going to need to do so many things to it. It's nice to have it in its own variable. And then I'm going to say noun equals NLP. I'm going to say new word equals NLP dot noun, that word. So make a noun object out of that word dot pluralize. And then, um, and actually, I'm just going to say this. Right? And then output plus equal word. So what I'm doing here, I think this is a nice way of doing it, is I'm saying, give me that text. If it's a noun, pluralize it and change the variable value and then output it. So the original word is placed in the output or the pluralized if it's a noun. And you know, I feel pretty confident about this. Let's go if pos.verb word equals NLP. dot verb, that word, and then future. So I think that's going to put it in future tense. So with a wor verb, I can make it future tense. So let's see how that works. Uh, I'm going to come back, hit refresh, hit submit. Uh, verb dot future is not a function. And so maybe I need to say conjugate or something. Let's look. Aha, yeah. So what, 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 I, what I can do is actually take the verb conjugate it, which returns to me a list of all the conjugations, the same, and then I can pull out the future one. So I imagine that it worked that way, but it didn't. I can say conjugate, conjugate dot future. So now I want to take the word, conjugate it, and then grab only the future tense. So now if I go back and do this and hit submit, it's 
will be a dark and stormy night. I guess it was a noun. Uh, I was teaching in a live stream. Is, will, was, I, I's will, was, teach in a will, live, will stream. Whoa, all sorts of crazy stuff is going on here. So, um, <laughs> cause I, so interestingly enough, um, you can see how this isn't working perfectly, <laughs> but I'm getting the basic idea that I'm sure I could finesse <laughs> how I'm analyzing the context and all sorts of things to sort of, and, and to sort of work out what it is that I'm doing. Um, so I, I want to just uh, point out that the, the code that I'll release um, with this particular uh, video uh, kind of has a lot of this built into it. I'm just going to look at this example. Um, so here is, and this should say future. So you know I can pluralize all the nouns, or I can make it the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Um, and now the quick brown fox will jump over the lazy dog. Boy, this, de this demonstration sentence worked a lot better. Let's come back to this. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Hit submit. You can say the quick brown foxes will jump over the lazy dogs. Well, there we go. I'm not sure what sort of weird things I got kind of from my goofy sentence before. Uh, ah, and TuTuber says I need to check if the term is not a pronoun. So that would be a great improvement. Thank you very much. So I can say if it's a noun and the POS is not a pronoun, Let's try that. And uh, I can say, I was, I, uh, I ran to the store. I will run to the stores. OK, great. So it didn't do that to I, because I also checked to make sure it's not a pronoun. So you can see I'm muddling my way through this with a sort of, you know, but the, the point of what I'm showing you here is what's possible. How do you take, how do you load the library? How do you create sentences? How do you do stuff to different kinds of words? And all of this is here and you can kind of look through what's happening here. And what's nice about this is you can also analyze the, uh, for all sorts of things. And there is, by the way, a corpus too. So you can, you can generate other words um, uh, um, and, and uh, that type of thing also from NLP Compromise, okay? So I hope you found this useful. I'll release code with this and, I, and you know, try to make some experiments to see how can you alter the way uh, uh, text, uh, the sort of language of a certain text is by using NLP Compromise to process it, analyze it, and change it, okay? So uh, great, and thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you perhaps in a future one.